GPUP or GPU partitioning is really neat. Essentially, if you don't understand what it is, it allows for us to share our GPU between a host OS, in this case I'm using Windows, and a VM, or in some cases even multiple VMs. And th using this method, people have found that it's possible to run multiple games all simultaneously across multiple players off of one single GPU. So it got me thinking, can we use GPU partitioning in order to run not one, but two VR headsets off of one single PC? We're about to find that out. <laughs> Now, before we actually get started, there's a few limitations that I've already found that we're probably going to end up running into, and I think it's important to get those out of the way first. First off, you will need to be running Windows 10 or 11 Pro or better. You won't be able to do this if you're running home or even the free version of Windows 10 or 11. And the reason for this is you need the professional version at least in order to get Hyper-V running, which at the moment is the only way that I'm aware of that actually supports GPU partitioning. So that way we're actually able to share our GPU with the VM. Second thing is going to be connecting our VR headset to the VM itself. Now our host OS should be no problem. As you can see right behind me, I have a Valve Index. This is hooked up through a DisplayPort and USB and should have absolutely no issues hooking up to our host OS. Our VM, on the other hand, will run into a different challenge. VMs using Hyper-V don't actually support any sort of USB, HDMI, or DisplayPort pass-through. Any of these would be needed in order to actually connect a physical VR headset to our VM. This leaves us with only a couple of options. Something like virtual desktop, or Oculus Air Link. This will allow for us to wirelessly stream our VM to a VR headset. The last thing is how do we actually set this up? Well, fortunately, we have quite a bit of help with that. Behind me, I have a GitHub page from James Stringer Parsec. Now, I will have a link to this GitHub repository down below, but him and a couple of others like him have actually built some really amazing tools that makes it really simple and easy to get started up and actually get a GPU partition VM running without any issue, which is really nice for us if we don't know what we're doing and we just need a little bit of help. Now let's talk about how we actually get this running. So I've already downloaded the GitHub files that I had shown you earlier. So this is the easy GPU PV, uh, tool that I had shown you earlier. So that he actually does document this very well and he describes exactly how everything works. Um, and he actually tells you how to get everything set up as well. So as I said, this tool does, it, like it, it's very well, uh, it's very well laid out what you have to do. Uh, he walks you through all the steps and everything, like everything you have to do is in this readme in case you ever get lost at any point. And in addition to this, you also have plenty of other options you can change out. Uh, you can change the path of your VHD. Uh, if you want to set your username and password by default, he actually sets some username and passwords. I'm just going to leave it there. Um, I believe it automatically logs in anyways, so I won't need to worry about actually logging in or anything like that anyways. Um, oh yeah, it's actually set right here, the last one, auto login, which is set to true. So that's set up too, so that way everything will automatically log in. Um, he also lets you choose, so in case you have multiple GPUs in your computer, if you have two, three, four, whatever, you can actually choose which GPU you want to partition off is very useful if you do have multiple GPUs. I only have the one, um, so I'm just going to leave it as auto. If you leave it as auto, it'll automatically choose a GPU for you, from my understanding. So as I said, I only have one, so everything should be fine there. And then I believe we just run the script, and it'll actually build out our new VM. It does take a little bit of time to do, so I'm going to go and leave this running, and then we'll be back in one second to actually see how this VM performs. All right, so I was not actually expecting this issue that I have right here. As you can see, I have a black screen. Um, so the, the VM actually comes with Parsec, which is actually a very good use case for something like this. Um, if you have, for example, you know, if you want like you and a couple friends to all be playing um, whatever games you guys play, Call of Duty, um, Fortnite, <laughs> Uh, Minecraft, whatever it is that, you, that you, you and whoever else is on your computer is playing, um, Parsec is actually a really great option for this since you can't actually output to multiple monitors at once and you can't 
share peripherals with those VMs. So I actually have over here um, Parsec open on my laptop. You can actually see, where's my mouse cursor? There it is. You can actually see the, I have the Parsec logo right there. Um, but for whatever reason, when I opened up Parsec here and remoted it into the VM, that whole screen went black. Um, let me actually see if I disconnect it. Oh yeah, if I disconnect it, then it goes back. That's interesting. Um, so that is something interesting to note. I don't think that's an intentional thing to have happen. Um, hold on. And then I hook it back up and you can see that goes back to black. Oh, maybe it's actually going to work now. Let's see here. Oh, interesting. So the mouse cursor is working, um, but something's going on with our VM here. But that's fine. I want to do this. That way we can try and start up uh, two instances of VR Mark simultaneously. All right, so I finally got it all up and running. So right here on uh, what you see here on the laptop, this is actually running through Parsec. Um, hopefully you should be able to see that right there. If I go ahead and focus in there, you can actually see that we do have Parsec running here. Um, and you should be able to see that we have our VM is starting to boot up the uh, the benchmark here for VR Mark. It actually did get it a little bit faster. And let me see if I can get look at those frame rates right now around 100 right now but i can also see over here our host os has not yet started its benchmarking yet there we go so let's see here we are getting i'm trying not to use uh the the pc itself so we can get a more accurate result here so you can see we're getting roughly 140 over here on our pc itself our VM actually isn't performing too terribly. It certainly could do better, especially for VR. You can see we're getting roughly around 80-ish. Uh, it's, it's starting to dip down a little bit. So we're getting roughly 40, 50-ish. Uh, it was definitely performing a lot better before we had our host OS actually running the benchmarks. And just as expected, our host OS actually did well outperform our VM, which was to be expected. Um, I did say that I was expecting that. Um, so let's go and have a look here. So here is our VM. Let me go and scroll down a little bit. Uh, you can see, so first off, overall score 3585. Um, it does, it actually doesn't list all of our hardware details, which is actually rather interesting. I don't know if I had noted that before. You can actually see here, oh, I want to go back to FPS for a second. I was more concerned with that at the moment. You can actually see, it looks like this was roughly the moment where our benchmark started loading on our host OS. See, it was performing pretty well up until that point. We were getting roughly 100. Stop that. <laughs> uh, you can see it was performing pretty well up to that point. It was around here that kind of dipped down. And I believe this was roughly the point here where host OS started running its benchmark here. And you can see we were getting roughly 70 to 80. <laughs> that is driving me crazy right there. Um, and then it eventually dipped down a little bit to around 50, 60. So I think it's, I think it's honestly going to depend on what we're running and the, and uh, what, what we're running there. So, and like I said, we can see our host OS. Let's go and have a look at this. Actually, it's pretty consistent. This was probably roughly the time where our VM shut down. And start performing a little bit better but even still it was performing pretty well the entire time so i think it's pretty fair to say that our host os will definitely get some pretty good performance no matter what um our vm on the other hand might be a little bit questionable and it's probably going to be a little dependent on our host os here so let's go ahead um and actually get some vr started up here i need to install some something here on our vm i think we'll start with some beat saber and then we'll go ahead and go from there all right so we're trying real quick with uh, with trying out the Quest. We're gonna start by just trying out the uh, VM alone and seeing how well that performs because I wanna know how well that performs on its own and not both at the same time right off the bat. Just as some proof, I also have my laptop here. I'm gonna be disconnecting this all together from Parsec to make sure that nothing else can interfere with how this VM performs. Um, or at least as little as possible. I'm pretty sure we've had some interference already as it is. So laptop not connected and it's going off and it's not going to be connected anymore. So now let's go ahead, um, let me do that. Let's go ahead and hook up the Quest 2. All right, so it took me a little bit of um, messing around with this, but I did finally get it so we can actually start up 
and connect with virtual desktop. I had to make a few changes here. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to be the same in every case. Just for reference, my computer is hooked up through an ethernet cable. Um, it does also have a wireless card in there, but I don't use that except for, um, Actually, I may not use that at all. <laughs> I may just have it in there. Um, but anyways, so I did have to change the network switch for some reason. I guess it defaulted to the wrong, to the wrong one. Um, you can also see here, I pulled up Oculus because it says it's not compatible with the system's hardware. My assumption is that similar to how VRMark wasn't able to get the GPU's information, I'm assuming that the VM is just not capable of getting that information in general. Um, that's kind of my assumption at the moment. So, but anyways, you can see I'm hooked up here in virtual desktop. So let's go ahead. Uh, here's the settings that I set for now. I'm going to see how far I can push this just running off the VM alone. And then we can work backwards from there if this starts running very terribly. Um, let me also go and get a performance overlay as well so we can get an idea of how well this is performing while we're playing as well. And let's go and launch Steam VR and uh, get Beat Saber started up. All right, so um, I, I do know how to play Beat Saber. <laughs> um, so right off the bat, um, we're not getting excellent performance here. Uh, you can actually see right now I'm getting <laughs> anywhere between 20 to 50 FPS, it looks like average. Um, so let's actually go ahead and try jumping in here. Uh, let's jump in Beat Saber here for a second and see just how well this works. Uh, <laughs> No, th this is definitely unplayable. L like, th this just does feel a little bit slow. And the audio is doing a weird little stutter here and there, which I think is definitely a big issue. Let's see here. Uh, I think I clicked on the wrong one. Here we go. Uh, let's do, I'm gonna turn that down too. Let let's try it low and see if we get any better performance there. Um, Cause like I said, I think that this is performing decently. Definitely not the best, but I think it's definitely performing decently and I think we can get this to do better. So let's go ahead and see here. So I ran into a bit of an issue here that I really was not expecting. Um, I'm now having to restart my whole computer because the VM sort of just stopped functioning uh, when I tried adjusting the settings and then opening up um, either ver uh, either Steam VR or Beat Saber um, both started giving me issues. I think it might have primarily been an issue with Beat Saber because Steam VR was honestly working fine until I tried opening up Beat Saber again. So I'm having to give this a quick reboot here because I wasn't even able to shut down the VM. It told me that the VM was completely unresponsive. So I'm giving this a full reboot and hoping that this will all work itself out. All right, we're trying this again. Um, I'm also going to try this, the synchronous space warp. I don't think I've ever actually tried enabling this, so I don't know how well this will actually function. Um, but according to the description, uh, it just says causes PC to automatically switch to half frame rate under heavy load while headset extrapolates the missing frames, which I think might be pretty beneficial for us actually, uh, if it kind of uh, generates half the frames itself on the quest. So let's go ahead and give that a shot and see if that kind of helps out too. Uh, again, I still have this at low. I'm leaving the frame rate at 90. Um, I haven't changed any other settings, at least from what I recall, so everything else should be fine. So let's go and try launching Steam VR again. Oh yeah, that's, that's a lot better. So uh, I, I think that's <laughs> that's probably something very important to note here too. Um, you might need to take the like any individual game's graphics settings into account. Um, I went into here, just settings. Um, Full screen's enabled, and we got our VR, our non-VR resolution 1280 by 720. Um, could probably also turn off the shockwave particles if I really want to, but I went and turned off smoke, screen distortion effects, post-process, uh, mirror quality. Um, I'm actually in quite a bit better performance now. So let's go ahead, let's actually try jumping into something. Audio actually sounds a lot better too. I, I think I had said that, that it kind of sounded like it was stuttering. All right, so I don't know if the camera is recording, so I'm gonna say <laughs> I'm gonna say this again. Um, Quest Two performed pretty decently, actually, um, on the VM. I will say um, there were definitely some stuttering issues. However, I'm pretty sure that was a network issue, not an issue with the VM itself. So I'm going to go on to step two. We're going to try and run two instances of VR now. So I actually already have. Um, just a second instance of VR, I can actually probably show you over here. 
you can actually see that's running Beat Saber right over there. And I just have uh, the index is sitting over there. I have something covering the sensor so it, it won't shut off or anything like that. Um, and it's just quite simply running. Um, I just have it running a quick uh, round of Beat Saber over here. So I'm gonna do the same over here and let's see how well this performs. All right, so already right off the bat, I can actually already feel the frame drops. I haven't even left the Steam VR home, which started up when I closed Beat Saber. Not too bad. It's definitely not great, um, but I think this may be playable. Um, I mean, yeah, I think this performs pretty well. This is definitely playable. I still wouldn't recommend it, you know, for everybody. I wouldn't recommend this being your like daily, everyday playing, um, but this is definitely playable. Now, when all is said and done, what, what are my personal opinions on this? Well, if you really wanted to get multiple people all playing on a single desktop, I think it's definitely worth it, especially if you have the hardware that's capable of running multiple instances of SteamVR all at the same time. Is it something I would recommend for everyday use? No, for a couple of reasons. One, you may have to sacrifice quality in order to make sure that you're able to run on that VM, especially if someone's using the host OS. Second, the uh, huge limitation of using a VM is you're limited on what headsets you can use. As I'd mentioned, you can't hook up a USB or DisplayPort signal and expect it to work with your VM. It has to be something wirelessly that you can hook up to your VM, Quest being a great example. However, I definitely think that something like this has its uses. For example, if you wanted to get you and a whole bunch of friends all set up in Pavlov or Onward or Beat Saber, or whatever else that you guys play that's multiplayer. I think that that's definitely a, a great option, especially if they don't have their own VR headsets and they want to give it a shot. Or even if you just want to show off to multiple people all at once, I think that that's also a great opportunity too. But let me know what you guys think. I'm genuinely, genuinely curious. Is this something you guys could see a good use for in every day? In every day? Or is this something that you guys just don't really see very much use for and you just would rather pass it up? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe button down below. With that, I'll see you in the next reality.